Hi guys, happy World Golf Day. I'm a day late. I couldn't really do anything to celebrate yesterday because I had another thing going on. But I wanted to make like a sort of get ready with me makeup video um, and just kind of talk about my experiences being golf and stuff. Um, so, palettes. What is this? It's called Glamour. 14 different colors got this as a Christmas present um, I don't know what makeup store sells them but this is what all the colors look like might use some from this NYX palette if you guys seen these in like Walgreens it has a lot of different colors in there too so yeah and then I've been really loving this palette. It's a BB Metallics palette. So everything is kind of glittery, but it's not super chunky craft glitter stuff. It's actually skin grade stuff that doesn't irritate me. So, yeah. My use of this stuff. Um, I also have like some loose shadows that I might use. This NYX Jumbo Pencil, I have that one. I have like another one that's smaller. I had a liquid liner, but I ran out. Um, Onx. I don't know what makeup brand this is, but they're all loose palettes. I'm going to try and show this to the best of my ability without spilling it. But this is like really black. Um, I don't want to spill it. I want to make sure that you guys can focus on it. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm going to be using that. Um, I'm not quite sure about what type of look I want to do today. I've been really loving this gold, um, loose shadow. It really adds interesting highlights, and a little bit goes a long way. So I, even though I use it a lot, it, I bear, I just tap the top of it, because the top usually has a lot in there. Yeah, the top easy has a lot going on and it's very pigmented. I'm going to try and be very careful with it. Um, yeah. I've never really bought a fucking eyeshadow primer a day in my life, so I'm just going to use this uh, super glossy lip gloss that I got like for free a few years ago in some type of thing that I bought. I got these for free. It's just like some shimmery glitter lip gloss that I use as like an eyeshadow primer when I'm not really going anywhere for too long, but I still want to do my makeup. If I want my makeup to last longer now, I use a setting spray with this. And the um, setting powder really helps to prevent creases. So it's just like a cheap hack. Um, yeah. Again, this isn't really meant to be a tutorial, just like a watch me do my makeup and see how I transform. I shaved my sides, I washed my face, primed it, all that skincare stuff. Um, not sure what colors I want to start off with today. Um, let me check my makeup bag. See if I got anything that would work as like a bit start off. I have white eyeshadow, but it never shows up as white on me. It always turns out to be some type of weird shade of brown or some type of iridescent color. This is white eyeshadow. It's a loose pigment, but it never, and I mean almost never, turns out being white. Um, and I do have a white jumbo um, pencil like this, but... I don't know where it is, so I'm just going to um, start off with this white eyeshadow and um, layer that with whatever color that I feel like doing. Um, yeah. I always forget about uh, when World Golf Day is until everybody and their mom shares memes about it or shares like their cringy baby bat pictures from high school or whenever they first got into the scene from all ages and it's always fascinating but you see what i mean this white eyeshadow always turns out looking some type of weird shade of gold 
on me like is never quite white um yeah but I still like to use it sometimes because it contrasts with the darker colors so I've been incorporating more color into my eyeshadow because I feel like makeup is a form of art and and when I paint I like to add lots of color to my paintings and it just really makes things stand out and um, when I add ink to it or anything dark or black it contrasts a lot better than if I just did everything in black and white I feel like that's a little bit boring and I don't really want to be boring with my look because I'm not really going anywhere today and I don't have like any sort of formal thing where I have to tone down for I can be as extra as I want with this look and um, that's pretty much the goal is to create a look that's pretty extra the only thing that I really wish that I had was um, my rhinestones sometimes I add rhinestones to my look or sometimes I do like a goth chandelier look or a goth lace look they haven't always turned out so well in the past but I still like to experiment with them in case you guys are wondering what I'm looking at I have like a little mini mirror that I'm just sitting on the table and looking at um, so I'm not just looking at some random thing off in the distance um, I was just checking my viewfinder because my laptop is to the right of me not directly in front of me and I'm using a webcam with loose pigments there is a lot of fallout so I do try and shake it or just use the, what's on the cap if I am just want like the bare bare minimum but yeah this no matter how much I layer no matter how much I use it never ever turns out as white on me it always looks like some weird shade of gold or a very light brown or whatever I don't know it's, it's very very strange I don't like to do the whole dark to light look spooky um, what's it called smoky eye look I usually start off light and then build up contrast and then add black on the outer sides. Lately, I've been really loving pinks, oranges, and reds because they all just flow together. But I've also been feeling greens and blues and yellows because of spring. I just can't find my um, loose pigment of yellow and pink that I usually use as an under layer but also I really like this palette because it's pigmented but it's also kind of subtle so if I want to see a subtle look I can do it if I want to do a hyper like pigmented look I can do that and it just helps create those in between layers to help me build up from that but anyways um I wanted to dig up some old cringy um, baby bat pictures that are like on my laptop that I don't even use anymore that I had back in college that doesn't even have internet or anything it's like a very old Mac book computer that is just for the basic basic needs like I was able to use your word program and store my music there and that was like it because I didn't have internet I just had to um, use a USB drive and transfer all the files onto a different computer and then translate it from whatever word program Mac uses into Wordbook and then use spell check and all that stuff because I like Word Docs better than whatever program Mac uses. I know Safari is the internet but as far as like their Word Docs and stuff it's a very I don't know it's kind of basic so I do want to dig those up for you guys and maybe post it. They're not on the internet. They're not on my old Facebook they're not on my current Facebook page, they're not on my old MySpace, I don't think I've ever posted them, but they're just kind of there. So I'm going to try and dig those up and use it. Um, yeah. Okay, so I've been filling pinks, blues, but I also really love oranges and reds, and I always feel like those don't really match, but I'm going to try and do that today, or maybe I can do a half and half. Um, hmm. This very pale mint green right here is what I'm going to be using. But yeah. 
So yesterday I couldn't really do a super goth AF look the way that I wanted to, but it's for very, very good reason. I was in school for dental assisting and yesterday was my graduation. I graduated with high honors and um, one of the top two people in my class. So I didn't really dress up super goth or whatever. I did wear like my black scrubs and I did do my makeup, but I didn't want to make it like super goth AF because um, I wanted to still look like a professional. And not that I don't think that goth makeup is professional. I just feel like there's a time and place for certain looks, you know. My extra, extra looks, I like to do those in my own time because I like to spend as much time as I want on them and not have to worry about being rushed. Not have to worry about um, how that's going to be perceived by my employers or anything. I believe in toning down, but not necessarily turning off. I'm not going to do that. I Hopefully that doesn't show through too much when I add the other colors that I really want. But, so I still do my makeup when I go to work or go to job interviews. Just because I don't want to work in a place that's going to bug me about something as small as makeup. You know... Like, I, I really just don't want to. And I've worked in places like that before. And it starts off being just makeup. You know, they don't like makeup. Or they don't like the way that I do my makeup. Or whatever. And then it escalates. And um, it gets to the point where they start being very nitpicky and kind of petty. About other things, too. This little circle thing I kind of like to do. But... It works better with the other brushes. I'm not trying to make it look super blended, but I do enjoy more blended looks now. Um, gonna go over this with this softer brush. I don't know the names of brushes, you guys. I don't know the names of um any style or whatever like I don't know the names of things that like that so a brush is just a brush to me a palette just a palette some of them are soft some of them are long some of them are short whatever it is that I feel is um needed for whatever look I'm trying to create is what I'm gonna most likely go with I don't like to do my makeup inside the lines Especially when I'm just doing my makeup for the purpose of artistic self-expression. I don't really care to try and follow any makeup rules. I just kind of make up my own. But, yeah. Like, professionalism. I try and have a balance between the type of makeup that I would wear to work. And the type of makeup that I would wear in my own time. One, because I don't have the time... Or the patience to be um, spending all this time on my makeup on a daily basis. And my skin can't really take that. Um, I just would prefer to just be mindful of that. Also, I just... I really like it when I am able to spend time on my look and not worry about the way that it's going to be perceived and whether or not other people are going to like it. Um, and I really love having that freedom. And, um, yeah. As far as other things going on in my life, I haven't really been focusing on that because I've just been focusing on my new career and I just want that to be the focus of my life right now. I still want to create art, I still want to make clothing and jewelry and such, but it has not been my main priority. One thing I don't like about this palette is this color right here is like an electrifying blue, but when I put it on my skin it looks really dark and it does not matter 
what type of primer I use or what type of color I have underlying it, it always looks like a really dark, dark, dark blue. I didn't put on any foundation today because I'm not going anywhere and I don't really find that necessary. I'm going to use this really glittery, glitter, glittery, glitter. It's a glitter pink, not glitter, glitter green blue color. Also, I feel like I don't have the best quality of, um, camera and audio and I'd be like getting stressed out because I, I watch a lot of the bigger YouTubers and I'm like, oh my, make my, um, setup is nothing like that what the hell but you know whatever works works and that's you know just what I'm gonna go for I usually wash my brushes in between sets because I want my makeup to look as pigmented as it possibly can be also I'm very creeped out by the thought of using dirty dirty brushes like Dirty, dirty brushes. So, but I have like a wet towel below me that I just kind of dab the brushes below. So it's not completely, completely clean, but it gets the job done for what I'm doing now. Um, I'm sorry if I'm kind of bouncing between talking about my makeup and other stuff, but I just wanted to... Um, communicate what I'm doing because I do get questions about what I'm doing or what methods I'm doing or whatever and I just want that to be clear so I start off with yellow I'm gonna do orange like this really pale kind of orange it's like a yellow orange oh no it's like starting to peel and crap oh well it'll still look pretty bomb I like to build layers and have more of a gradient so my makeup looks have been more blended lately and like experimenting with stuff but yeah I wanted to make a video about modeling but it's just so much every time I think about doing it I think of more stuff that I should probably add it and I just feel like if I do that it'll just never it'll be like a never ending series and that's not really what I want um I might do another one later but basically modeling just isn't a huge part of my life anymore um I'm just most of the people that I was interested in working with turn out to be crappy people and it's very disappointing and discouraging and I just don't really feel like dealing with all that um also I don't know I no longer have the tolerance to be treated the way that I used to um when I first started modeling like when I first started modeling because I was so new and I was in such a vulnerable position I allowed myself to be put in different situations that I didn't really need to be put in because I was so afraid of being perceived as a bad model and um and then reputation is so important and when you're new to the industry and you have issues with people um using this one right here like when you're new to the industry and you don't really know your way around things and you start having issues with people and complain about it it just makes you look bad and unprofessional especially when the people that are um, doing things to be unprofessional or doing things to upset you or push your boundaries they don't try that stuff with more experienced models. They don't try that stuff with um, other photographers. They don't try that stuff with makeup artists in the industry. They don't try that stuff on group photo shoots. So 
to everybody else's knowledge, um, those people are angels, those people are professional. And if someone new comes out and says this person is terrible and I've had an awful experience with them, they're less likely to be believed and they're more so seen as like someone that just wants to cause drama not really somebody that is going to be taken seriously as a professional in the industry and um i saw that happen a lot and i didn't want that to happen to me and i didn't want to uh ruin my career before it even began and i've changed a lot in terms of my goals with modeling i've changed a lot in terms of um change a lot in terms of my interpretations of what it means to be a model I've changed a lot in terms of what my goals are as a model and everything over the years and I just did want to be that person that was new to the industry and just start calling out people for their nonsense when I just started that's really annoying and it comes off as very entitled and um, I just didn't want to be that type of person that ruined my career before it even got started and I wasn't even sure that I would even want to have a career as a model it just kind of evolved because I started off doing it for fun as a method of creative self-expression because I saw that other people were doing that. But then it turned into a job because I just couldn't find anything else. After the recession, nobody else would hire me. And it was the only thing that I could do for money. It was like the only skill that I had. So I really just had to do everything in my power to make it work for me. And um, that meant that I put myself in some pretty sketchy situations that I really shouldn't have because I didn't have any other options. I didn't have any other skills. I didn't have any other um, plans with my life. And I feel like that's like everybody's story when they first start out, especially if you're really young and you're new. Like, you can be very naive. And, um,. That naiveness could get you into trouble. It can get you into different things. I'm going to do this gold eyeshadow. It can get you into um, situations that you don't really need to be a part of. And um, the more I got older and the more I realized what was going on. And the more I started taking more control over my own body and the way in which I want to express myself and the way that I want to be seen and represented um the more I was seen as difficult the more it was harder for me to get work on one hand it was kind of like damn that sucks because I can really use the work on the other hand it was just like well I feel relieved because I'm finally standing up for myself and I don't have to worry about um, dealing with people that drive me nuts and um, it's just never been a good thing for me it was like detrimental to my health mentally and just discouraging and I just didn't want to um, be involved and if that's all modeling was and all it had to offer then I just didn't really want a part of it um, yeah, so I might make another video talking more in depth, but I feel like in this industry, it's okay for people to, um, disregard your boundaries or not respect you or not fully see you as a person deserving of that kind of respect if you're a model and it doesn't matter how long you've known them it doesn't matter if you're friends it doesn't matter if you're family it doesn't matter if you've worked with them before in the past and you've had a good experience 
it doesn't matter if they're mutual friends. It doesn't matter if that photographer has worked in the industry for years. It doesn't matter if they have a whole photography degree. Like, that type of stuff doesn't really matter. Because everybody wants to be a model and you're seen as disposable. And it doesn't matter if you've been working for years. It doesn't matter how much experience you have, how developed your portfolio is. It doesn't matter how much work you put into what you do. Like, it just doesn't matter anything. And at first I thought, oh, you know, things are going to be different in a few years. Once I have more experience, people are going to respect me more. And I'll have more value. And um, my portfolio would be a lot better than it is now. And I'm going to have this long list of people that I've worked with to prove myself. But that never happened. And I've talked to other models that, that have done modeling just as long as I have. Or sometimes even longer. Like some of them have done it for 10 years, 15 years. Um, some of the older models, you know, 20 years. And it doesn't matter if they're freelance, with an agency. Um, it doesn't matter um, what race they are. It doesn't matter if they're an alternative model, an Instagram model. Um, if they're in the U.S., the U.K., Sweden. Um, if they do, they do fashion. They do uh, alternative fashion, fetish, um, more adult industry work or anything the issue with respect for models is really big um so yeah as far as my life as a goth goes i've made several videos about that um i feel like being goth hasn't really done anything to um impact my life in a negative way just by being myself and expressing myself and who I truly am and what I want in life. But it has brought out negative emotions and negative responses in others. And I'm not just talking about strangers on the street yelling, go home for it because not Halloween. I'm talking about um, people not respecting me as much as they respect other people because I'm goth. And there are some people that I know who feel like they've grown out of the goth phase and they just identify as alternative and they're still waiting for all of their goth friends to come to the light and not identify as goth anymore. And they have a lot of self-hate towards themselves and the the phase in their life and they just see everybody else as being representative of that and um it's not a very good thing and because they have those type of emotions directed towards themselves they have a negative view towards you and what you like and what you're into and I've had a recent ex I've had recent experiences dealing with acceptance and people that I never expected to have that as an issue from and it sucks it never gets easier when I use this I use diva over here um it sucks it never gets any easier it never gets any, any better as i age it it always sucks because anytime i have to deal with any type of issues of acceptance when it comes to um people it's almost never the general public it's almost never like a stranger it's always somebody that's in my life that I 
assumed, understood, and respected me. And then, you know, something happens, and they show their true colors, and it turns out they don't. Um, and that, that sucks. But I still, I still celebrate being myself and expressing myself the way that I want. Um, for World Golf Day yesterday, um, I listened to the horror stories, I drew a little bit, um, and then I got ready to go to my ceremony, um, and then we went out. I went out with my boyfriend to celebrate, um, finishing school and graduating and, and all that cool stuff. But, yeah, like... Um, it's pretty much been my life lately. Nothing really new, um, going on. This purple isn't very pigmented, which is why it worked great if I'm just going to a job interview or whatever. But, um, if I want to do a more dramatic look, then it's not really good for that. So I always end up adding black to it because it's not dark enough or pigmented. So it's like a dark purple now. I don't think it matters how pigmented my lipsticks are or um, how dark they are. Um, I'm still going to probably end up always adding black eyeliner to it. Like always. I always contour with black eyeliner or black eyeshadow. Sometimes I do purple, but um, that's like my main go-to. I don't like it to look too starky and obvious. I like it to be more blended because I don't like it when I see other people's looks and they look good when you look at them directly. But as soon as they turn their head or you see them from the side, you just see this straight back line going and it just, I don't think it's a good look on me personally. For other people, sometimes it works, but I just don't, I don't think it's a good look for me. That's not the thing that I want to do. I have on zero foundation, concealer or anything. So it's not as extra as I really want, but I don't want to do all that just for YouTube. It's like I want to make this darker. Thicker. that up so it blends. I cannot find the eyeliner pencil sharpener to this one. It's not in the makeup kit. So what I'm going to do is use this brush. It's not a wing tip but we're gonna test it out and see how this works and I'm gonna use this pigmented black eyeshadow. It's like an eyeliner. I know you're not supposed to pull your face when you do your makeup, but it just makes it so much easier for me. And I've done this a lot when I don't have eyeliner. Just use black eyeshadow. A little bit softer than I want, but it works. I'm curious to see what you guys all did for uh, World Golf Day. If you guys did anything to celebrate or went out or um, made it to a uh, Gothic wave trepping in Germany, I think that's how you say that properly, but I really don't. I don't know. 
Well, let's be German. I want to see if I can do any sort of dramatic eyeliner look with this. Like eyeshadow look. It's really smooth. It's not really a stark line. One of my favorite things about having shade size is I have more room to do these extra dramatic eyeliner looks and it's, I don't have to worry about it touching my hair because even if it goes into my hairline, it just, it works for me and I like it better that way because it's just extra AF and that's just the way they like it. Again, this isn't really meant to be a tutorial, it's just watch me do my makeup and um, celebrate World Gop Day. It just must be a fun video so if you're a type of person where you cringe a lot at watching people do their makeup, this probably isn't the thing for you. I learned from like a makeup artist a few years ago that when you do your uh, mascara, you're not supposed to just um apply it on and you know dab it just straight on like that you're supposed to like make the edges um thick kind of like how if you're teasing your hair you do your edges thick and then you um go over the ends a few times and pull it out so that it kind of creates the illusion that you're wearing falsies. And that's just the way that I've been wearing, doing my mascara ever since. And it works for me. A lot of times people do think that I'm wearing um, false eyelashes. Um, I'm going to pause the video right here and then come back and do my brows. So... See you guys in a bit. Okay, I'm back. I realized that this video is like 40 minutes long, so I'm gonna try and like hurry up. Um, while I was looking for my um, pencil sharpener, I found this other liner that I totally forgot about. It's called Teal Tees by Elf. It's like a teal gel eyeliner thing. I already put some on a little bit, but I'm gonna finish it off and um, do some. Um, teal liner on top of the black liner and I'm going to add some more black liner so yeah told you guys this look is going to be extra AF so if you're not here to be extra with me I'm so sorry for you honestly this liner is kind of hit or miss for me I'm not a huge, huge fan of liners. I mean, a huge fan of um, gel liners. They're kind of smudgy. I think they kind of work better as like an eyeshadow primer for a similar color. Like this is the color that I want. This is how bright I want this color to be right here. Like very similar like that's how vibrant I want it to be but it's like so dark um I did find my pencil sharpener one thing I was looking for was my rhinestones because I did want to make this look extra AF but I cannot find my rhinestones and I was just in Michael's the other day and I'm like damn man I saw like a whole bunch of really cool rhinestones that I would like to add to my makeup I saw some that were like purple and blue and like iridescent and like they change as you move past them like the colors and they look super duper cute now that I find my eyeliner I can be super extra with this cat look
still not the best when it comes to these, but I still try. Like, they're almost never fully even, but I still, you know, try and work it out. I wish I was able to find a yellow, um, loose pigment, but I didn't. And that is just totally fine with me. But, yeah. I think I'm just going to fill this in. Okay. Um. I found this loose pigment by Mika Bella. Mika Bella. I don't know how you say this, but um, it's a loose um, pigment, so I can't show it, show it, but that's pretty much how it looks. It's very, very vibrant. Very vibrant. Like, little goes a long way. I'm only going to use what's in this cap to add to this eye. So I feel like it's just not vibrant enough compared to the other eye. I did use a red and all that cool stuff, but Boy, but it doesn't really pop enough for me, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, since I was able to find the pencil sharpening to my very short eyeliner, um, I'm gonna do my eyebrows. I don't always do my eyebrows, like, if I don't feel like it, I just won't do it. Um, some people ask me, like, what if you don't feel like drawing your eyebrows on every day? People are just gonna have to deal with a weird girl with no eyebrows like I don't care I did like my brow bone highlighter just to be extra and usually when I do my brows I like them to be higher than like my actual brows so I don't really care to have like natural looking brows or natural placement I don't want brown I don't want red, I don't want like a ginger red, I don't want a brownish, blackish kind of color, like I just, I don't want it. Also, I don't really care that these are not perfectly even, because it's really just like whatever to me. I do try to make my eyebrows a little bit thicker than I used to because in photos they look thinner. So I do, I still like them thin, but I don't want them like super thin. I feel like that looks like a hot mess on me if I do it super duper thin compared to some of my slightly thicker looks. I feel like I blended this too well, and I want this to be like super dramatic, so I'm going to go over that again. Also, I'm aware that I have full lips naturally, but I still overdraw them because I'm dramatic and this is me being extra. again but we're not gonna blend it super duper well I'm gonna add some of this black eyeshadow okay so it's darker I'm all done now I'm gonna take my thumbnail and um, post it later on today. It's still, you know, May 23rd, which is the day after World Cafe, May 22nd. I was not able to find my rhinestones or anything. Um, I have my earrings here. These are like my go-to. One of these I made and they're in my Etsy shop and the other one I got from a festival. So, these are the ones that I made. Each one I make is different bat and hoops and then this has like a lot of geometrical patterns on it I got it from a festival 
I've just been loving adding that to my look. I do want to at some point get multiple piercings on my ear just so that I could have like multiple pairs of earrings at once. Because what I used to do in high school is if I couldn't decide what pair of earrings I wanted to wear, it wasn't just enough to be niche matchy like I am now. I had to wear like two pairs of earrings and stuff it into one hole and do the same thing here. So it'll be like two earrings here and then two earrings here and they're all like jammed into that same hole. And I don't like the way uh, split ears look and I didn't want my ears to split so I stopped doing that. And I stopped wearing like heavy earrings every single day. I only wear it so like occasionally. Um, if I were going out today I would wear like three different necklaces. I always minimum have three necklaces. Like I start off with a choker and then like a medium length necklace and then a long necklace. And then sometimes I do a long necklace and then like a super long necklace. Like I just really like the layered um, necklace looks. Um, but yeah, this is kind of ombre from this to this because it's like black, blue, turquoise, green, gold, gold, yellow, orange, 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 pink, red, and then pink again to bring out the oranges and the pinks and stuff. So I kind of ombre from this side all the way up to this side. Again, I don't really know how to teach you guys how to do makeup, but like, here's a video of me doing makeup, and if you learn something from it, then that's great. I hope you guys had a super lovely World Goth Day, and you know, just be your extra goth self. Go out and express yourself. If there is any parties around you, or concerts, or whatever, you know, join them. If there's some type of spooky, like, DIY project you've been dying to work on, do it um i don't have to tease my hair because i'm black and my hair is just naturally like this i just happen to shave my sides and this is what you get so please stop asking me how i tease my hair because it is not teased currently this is a twist out and you know my naturals would know what that means but it's a twist out a few days old some of them are still pretty locked and then um some of them not it's really puffy because my twist out was not dry when I started taking it down, but I was on my way to an interview, so I had to take it down. But anyways, I'm Brian Mulling. Thank you guys so much for watching this super long video. If you made it to this, to the end, you made it this far, like you guys were super awesome. Thank you guys for supporting me, and I'll try and post more videos later. Bye!